Hello, you gorgeous humans. You thought you were going to be lying in the sun drinking more Prosecco. You thought you had a life, but you haven't. You're here and I'm delighted. Thank you for carving up a little slice of time for yourself. Welcome, teacher squatters, the big gang, the the people who can't stop thinking about the job. I mean, we are under the gloom, aren't we? The gloom of exam time. And if any of you have given birth to children in certain years, I can't do the maths of that. But if you've got a child who is, you know, doing A-levels, GCSEs, and you're nursing them through it, oh, it's tough, isn't it? Big love to all those people doing parenting stuff and exams and oh that's that's hard and then we got sats week and i'd love to look inside the mind of year six teachers next week and pull all their threads of thinking together because we need some serious manifestations happening you know let's hope there's not a question on passive voice yeah, well, I'm with you. Uh, you'll keep in touch with how it's going. Um, and a uh, big, big uh, good luck to all the children and the teachers who've got to package up all them SATS papers when they're all done, because that's tough, isn't it? Right, tonight we are going to spend a really productive amount of time uh, getting to the nitty gritty of the spelling book and bringing it to life. Now, I know loads of you have got your books. That's brilliant. Um, you, it's a whole year's worth when you get hold of yours. Oh, hold it up. What you do? You keep missing things. Oh, Mr. C. I've a long time checking out Oh, are you? I'll tell you what. He's, no, it, I don't get it, but I do get it. He's, uh, he's grumpy. He's, he's, got a, a, he's just gone and done a COVID test. And he was trying to not arrive tonight. He's completely clear, but moody. Uh, yes, if you get hold of uh, your book, it's a whole year's worth. But what tonight is about is actually, um, once I've got the book in my hands, how do I operationalise it? How do I bring it to life, make it actionable in the classroom? And uh, you're going to leave tonight having this kind of crystal clear sense of uh, how to make it work with your children. Come on, can I just say... Oh, put, are you, are you just say, Mr. I'm just saying, if you're thinking, yes. oh, I'm going to drop on one of the websites and buy the book now. Oh, wait, hold on a minute, wait. wait until, no, I'm going to say, wait until the end of this session. Don't be buying it yet because... Jane's got um, some discounts and stuff. Have you just put your face on there while you yes, talk? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes, well, I haven't, I haven't yeah, formally I introduced you. Yeah, yeah, I haven't formally introduced you yet, but we'll do all of that. I mean, you can be on the camera all... all. Yeah. <laughs> so, first things first, uh, I know you've come for a um, kind of a, a quick CPD bomb here of spelling, but if you want to, if you want something slower, um, calmer, uh, maybe even more professional, uh, come and find us around the country. Uh, we're touring uh, this summer term and into autumn term, starting in Birmingham and finishing in Glasgow. So that is uh, the spelling conference. Um, all around the place. So, Megan Thomas is watching from Birmingham. Oh, Megan, come and see me in Brum, and we can all slip into our Brummy accents. Or oh, our Bab, lovely. Do a bit of that. Now, um, what am I going to do today? I'm going to talk about the active ingredients that we need to deploy uh, so that uh, this intervention can have the biggest impact. Um, and talking very specifically how we can strengthen our spelling teaching. Um, Ian, if you can put your camera on now, uh, timing everything. Timing. Just, just, timing is everything. Um, he, he is uh, here to support, manage the chat, uh, make the coffee and other such beverages. Uh, but also, um, uh, if you could, if you're showing your T-shirt there, Mister C, on the oh, screen, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you've got a. He's he's wearing number thirty-five because he got very excited this evening, uh, and he's got a code for us uh, that means we get thirty-five percent off, not just 
spelling books, but the whole of the Training Space website. Mr. C, can you reveal, or is it too soon to do the reveal? What? The big code. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Sunday session. Have you got a bit of something? I'm going to write it down now, as you tell. So I, the, I can't code, remember the code is uh, Sunday sessions 35, or one word. Ooh. No hashtags. Joe's writing it down. Here I am, writing it down. We've been allowed to give a discount. There you go. Session. Oh, yeah. People won't be able to do anything. But that's only, that will switch off on the night, uh, next Saturday night. So uh, I think it's the, the night of the 14th of oh, uh, May are you sure? 2022. So if you're watching this yeah. in 2024. That's when it night, ends. Yeah, it's uh, over. You may be dead by then. <laughs> one of us might be dead. But... If you're watching it then. Yeah, doom and gloom. Enjoy. See what I mean? Yeah, that, that <laughs> discount won't work, basically. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, I just wanted to do a big fat PHAT shout out to Miss Caunt, uh, because Miss Caunt's children actually can. Uh, she started oh. after listening to the Sunday sessions, her Go Graphing Grafter board and hey it popping off uh that's a quote from her you know the kids are coming up through reading scroll down a little bit uh, uh they're reading and other lessons and they're finding all of the sound associations where they're zooming into that phoneme and they're finding it in other words with the same sound so it's working it's working she's excited her kids are excited it's popping off in her room um now uh since last sunday uh, and this Sunday, uh, my mum came to visit. I hope mum you're watching. She often does, um, Maureen. And uh, she was a bit disappointed with my foul up, uh, with foul, as I was myself, to be honest. Uh, because I said the whole point of this is to iron out homophones. And then I went and um, uh, made a right mess of it. But then she did ask me, well, look, if you had chosen the right foul with your example, what would the sound associations be? And that's my mother all over, really, just like pushing me to the edge of my thinking all the time. Uh, thanks, Mum. So, yeah, you know, and this construction here for ow in foul is more common than this one. And you can find it in things like out and cloudy and aloud and flower. So there you go, that's one for my mummy. So, yeah, always working hard, Mum, all the time. Thank you for that question. Okay, uh, what's happening today? We, just so you know, have left on YouTube for your delectable interest um, last week's um, Sunday sessions, which is all about Go Graphene Grafters. You can watch that, you can rewind me, you can replay me, and that is the 20 minutes that's happening every two weeks. Now, if you don't know about that yet, you must watch that, because what we're going to talk about builds on from that section of time. So, you have got, basically, let's kind of try and keep it a little bit simple. Every week, 15 minutes dedicated to spelling. But it's actually then how that 15 minutes is organised. Well, in week one, we take 20 minutes of time to do our spell it out board and children meet those words for a whole two weeks infused in everything we do, just like Miss Corn has done there and finding associations and then they meet their little quick low stakes test and gather all the sound associations, moving from individual to group. Now, we talked about that last week. If you need to do catch up, go and have a go at looking at that. Now, what we're doing tonight, so you're really certain, is two things, actually. We're going to zoom into the 30 minute investigation and how that is brought to life in the classroom. And then also on the following week, the quick tasks that are chunked into five 10 minute quick hits. Oh, I've got all like, um, what's it called? Hit, H-I-T, you know, like, yeah. One of them, I think, high intensity. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can I just, before you go, yeah. I've got a couple of hellos. 
I'm not no. going anywhere. <laughs> no, before you carry on, mate. Yeah, before so, you carry on rambling. Uh, Vicky Hassel again. Oh, Vicky. Uh, One of old school Vicky. Yeah. Vicky's been here since the Jude, beginning. Jude Temple's in. Oh, the also been here from the beginning. yes. You welcome, know, Jude. Jude. He's in Oh, now? Wimbledon, oh, no. no, it hasn't stopped. Because I've asked people where they're watching from. Oh. And Julie's watching from Wimbledon. Well, well, for my 50th birthday, Ian's taken me to Wimbledon. So that's exciting. <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm getting quite stre stressed about the etiquette of what to wear. Uh, but, yeah, that's exciting. Can I, uh, yes. Can I just talk about... You're talking about so Jay's talking about some of the original teacher squad guys in today. Have you flipped um, your camera? Yeah, yeah, I've oh, got the camera. Boy. So last week, uh, Kai Adams, who runs the Teacher Squad Facebook group, joined the chat said, oh, can we put on session 10 of the original, uh, the very original Right Stuff sessions that we did way back in 20, uh, March, was it, May, something like that, 2020, right at the beginning of lockdown. Um, so that's now available to watch on, on YouTube. I've sort of like basically re-uploaded it to YouTube. So you can watch that. Do go and watch it. It's really good. It's really funny. Um, and uh, there's a nice sort of like community made video that Kai organised way back then. And um, so that's worth while watching. Sorry, Jane. I know you're in a real rush there. You've got loads to get from. Okay. Did, did you feel that dirty look through the camera there, Mr. C? I think you did. Yeah. I, I, do you know, because you've been showing me dirty looks every time I've come, I'm really tempted not to tell you about that bit of fluff on your cheek. I'm sorry. <laughs> Goodness, I, I know, I'll tell you where I, I know where that that fluff has come from. Actually, that's from the word wizard's beard. I think that's all I'm saying, and oh, nothing, Rachel. nothing more. Um, okay, when you're teaching spelling, on a practical note, you need to have um, two books for the children from year two upwards, year two to year six, and one of your books is going to be called your spelling book. And it's going to have the long investigations in the front and the quick, short tasks in the back. There's another book that we talked about last week, which is going to be your Go Graphene Grafter books, where you work on a double page spread, moving from their individual testing moment to their one minute to build sound associations. They're the two books that are on the go. There's a third dimension, though, which involves um, your focus five. And on the focus five, this is stuck to their desk um, and it's laminated and children focus and choose what spellings they want to work on. Now, how we bring this to life is in their editing sessions and I'll talk more about that down the line. So in terms of practical working, just a bit of recap, we've got a Go Graphing Grafter book where we work on a double page spread. That's in last week's Sunday sessions and we've got another book where we do the long and short uh, investig investigative tasks, if you can say it. And then the third dimension is their own personal spellings stuck on the desk don't use your glue stick whatever you do you might have to move to sellotape for this one uh, so that um, they are always in a child's eye line of the key words that they're working on that are very purposeful uh, and important to them at that moment in time okay so what we're going to start with is the trickiest part of the spelling book, which is the half an hour investigation. And what I'd like you to connect with is that the spelling book is a wire frame of kind of kneeing us up to what needs to happen in the class. However, it's not going to be completely productive without you guys meeting me halfway and uh, really thinking about the pathway, almost the explanation pathway of how children will meet the experience of the investigation. What it mustn't be is children just 
uh, seeing a hypothesis, being asked to test it, and actually we just uh, chuck them in the deep end and they're essentially very soon drowning and they're way, uh, you, know, they're, you know, they're too far in and it's over their heads. What we need to do is get to a place where we're really thinking about um, the timing, the, um, the careful, I suppose, interfacing of us as a teacher fading in and out so that uh, children are kind of swimming effortlessly with a, with a sea of words uh, and they're sifting and sorting them um, and they begin to get a very good depth of understanding uh, about the structure of words. That's, that's where we need to take them. Now, how do we build this uh, explanation design into uh, the spelling book? You know, and I know a lot of people have said that the hypotheses are really challenging, and they are. Um, so we've got to see our role as very direct instruction, um, but thinking about when we can um, intervene in a timely manner. I'm going to add more to that. This is the sort of thing I'm talking about. When you've got your spelling book, there's lots of details in the back about a good quality teaching sequence for spelling. But tonight, there are four key things, four big messages that I want you to take away. Number one is that once they've met a hypothesis, we don't leave them lonely. We're going to ensure that they've got some direct instruction and some information, some core information, some knowledge about some of the uh, key ideas that we're exploring. The second aspect is that we also, as a teacher, are going to make it very clear how we want them to sort and organize their thinking, particularly as they work with words, where they group them, where they position them, so they can begin to see patterns more clearly. That information and layout even occurs before they meet the hypotheses. So once they meet the hypotheses, they're much more certain how they're going to navigate and organise their thinking. And finally, we are um, thinking about the words that they meet, uh, that meet their expectations, but also challenge their expectations. We have a mixture of um, kind of proving and disproving words. Okay, let's understand that a little bit more. So, in your spelling book, when it comes to a half an hour long investigation, it is split over two pages. So you'll know that these are the long 30 minutes. What I don't want it to be is that you basically take that double page spread and lob it in a photocopier and hand it out to the kids because it will really just die in the water. Instead, what we need to do is think really clearly about what the key learning is, what the key learning is going to be for them and how we assist them to get there. So, for example, this hypothesis um, is uh, essentially asking children to understand that we might have a letter in the alphabet like the letter C, but we can pronounce it in different ways. And are there any patterns locked in to those different pronunciations? So that's the key learning. Before they even meet the hypothesis, we're going to get them to... Um, think hard about words and we're going to gently scaffold them into some of the bigger ideas that they're going to see through the hypothesis. So we're going to ask them to get ready for some hard thinking and we've got, hello miss, ba bashing doors, crash bang wallet, what are you doing? 
I wonder, I wonder what he's doing. Oh, yes. He's just got to get some medicine. Oh, red wine. Oh, what lovely. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, right. Uh, so we've got six words here. And, um, and we've got the letter C. But can we sort them into these two big pronunciation groups? Do the words that include this letter... Are they pronounced s or k? Can they find the difference? So we take these words and begin <coughs> with, oh, bless you, Mr. C. <laughs> you need some more medicine. <laughs> Sorry. Now, what you get here is signet, serial, and city get sorted into the s group. Cat, customer, and cone get sorted into the group. If we look a little bit closer again, we can begin to see a bit of a pattern with the vowels. Now, we're not asking the children to discover this themselves. This is going to be quite directed from us. We want them to look for the pattern, but we're also there to illuminate it for them. So, we've got the letter C followed by the vowel E and the vowel I. And if we look at these other words like uh, certain and cease, we can see that if this letter combination happens, then we're going to pronounce the letter C as a S. If you look at this vowel I, we've got it put together here in this combination, we get city, citrus, and civil. Now we know why is not labelled as a vowel but creates vowel sounds, and we often think why oh why is why not a vowel? And here creating signet, cyst, and symbol. We want children to start seeing that that pattern that those letters particularly generate the s sound. Like yeah, of course I can. Look, oh, oh see, so he right. is listening. Oh, bless him. Bless his little red wine socks. Oh, and if we look over here at these words with different vowels, these words are more likely to produce the sound like um, cat. Well, that, I don't know why that's in that group. That rubbish, isn't it? Cat and can or customer, cut, cube, cone, coach, come. Once we've got that established, then children are going to be much better placed to test it out. Now, before we let them test it out, it's going to be absolute chaos unless we help them organise how they might lay it out. And that is a critical part of this, that we are thinking as a teacher, let's put some lay, layout formats down for them so that they can be more uh, focused on the core part of what they're trying to do. So... This is the sort of thing I would inject into the room so that it's not an absolute mess travesty uh, and they've got this sense of beginning to sift and sort. Of course, the grids would be according to their age, you know, if they're their handwriting, you know, what they can cope with. But they begin to um, see that once they find words, they can put them in the right places. Once they find words that don't meet the pattern, but they found it, let's say, a k sound, they can group it down in this other part. And that will assist their thinking, uh, thinking like a spelling detective, looking for patterns. Now, once they've got some core teaching, once they've got a layout, then we introduce the hypotheses. So here, the letter C 
is most commonly pronounced as a soft C, as in city. S. That's what they're going to test. Is it true? Is it false? Now, what I'm also doing as a teacher is across that 30 minutes, and you're probably going to hijack five minutes with a bit of teaching. You've got to instruct them on the layout. Um, you've probably got about 20 minutes of you know, time of them exploring words, recognising that we'd want to draw it together. So the pulling it together of kind of the strong conclusions, you know, you probably want to give yourself five minutes. So it's kind of giving children that 15 minutes of working with words, but our job there is to fade in and out with words uh, that are provided and we begin to group and sort. So we can begin to show them, look, where would ice go in this grid? It definitely go there. It's definitely making the s sound we group it there. Where would Cypress go? Where would Acid go? You know, and we've got little unusual words, very rare, words like Celt, where it breaks the pattern. But it's really unusual to have words like that. Can I just ask a quick question? Yes, of course this you can. Practical question. Yes. Maggie Kirby, 65. Oh, Maggie. Um, yeah, so what Maggie Kirby 65 is asking is, people who have been following this, does it not take them ages to lay out their work? Or would you give them a template for the lay Oh, definitely a template. That's a really good question. I'm, I'm, I, I hope I didn't mislead you. I mean, there is no way kids, like, have we got a ruler? Can you find your pencil? Good have time. you have you eaten it? There's no time. That is definitely um, a grid, a format, a kind of a mind map. A, it, it doesn't matter, but that is almost ready to go for them because uh, we don't want anything that's kind of pulling them away from the core learning part. There is no way they'll be able to organise that themselves. What I'm no, really so as as Kirsty and Stark has said, yeah. some of the older ones will really do, they'll be able to look them up quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll be throwing in sort of like um, sort of like non specifics into this as well. And it should be leading on to further conversations that they have with each other. Like the fact that well, I can't think of any now, but you know, like they oh, introduce it there, the S and the C. So yeah, so that's different again. That's like we can find the letter C but it's working with, you know, it's in partnership with the letter S, that one phoneme. So that's kind of, that's doing something different again, and we want to explore that. There's always exceptions to the rule yeah. in the English language. But I think it's really important that we're not get, getting them bogged down with layout. And that's why uh, the spelling book will either kind of rise to the top and work for you, or it, it will sink um, if we don't put the effort in to actually um, provide that pathway for them. And that pathway has two clear components. They need a knowledge dump of teaching from us. Sorry to use the word dump and swimming pools together. That's a bit of a night. That's just like an, an 80s throwback of my life. So, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Uh, do, you but, know they have, um, do you know swimming pools have a special net for food? Do they? Yeah, just specifically mm. for food. Like, so, yeah. Fact, do you know, one of the beauties of being married to Mr. C, he has like so many amazing facts like about that. Food. Just in general, about all sorts of things. Um, but that, you know, they, they need some knowledge, they need a pathway, they need a bank of words. Uh, we definitely need to think about actually how would. How do we even begin to navigate this and lay this out? We've got to put the hard graft in there uh, to help them. And then uh, it will begin to live and breathe in the room much better. Um, so again, 
this is like misleading actually can i just say that out loud really misleading how it's like on two pages because really they'd be side by side um they'd be side by side for the children they'd be nearby uh they'd be um we'd have our version as well and we'd fade in with words we've got words on flashcards we're helping them um and we can begin to see well not only do we have some words that are coming in uh, like um, custom, which would come in here, or computer that would come in here, or cake, we'd start to see actually there's loads of other words where the letter C is used and it isn't followed by a vowel. Oh, I don't know why I'm underlining that. I'm a bit stupid, miss. Don't underline that bit. Um, and it's not followed by a vowel, but what, how is it pronounced? You know, in cliff and club. So we're going to start unlocking lots of different words as well. So uh, we can see that there is a pattern linked to vowels, but there's also, you know, this other bigger thing happening when um, words, uh, the letter C, isn't linked to um, vowel usage, but it's more likely to be pronounced as k. So, and let, final position, public traffic toxic. Now, this is, you know, partly them finding, partly us adding, partly bringing in words where it's like, well, actually, where are we going to put that? What does that tell us? So we really do need to be ready with um, a super soiree of words uh, to keep it alive. That they will generate mm. amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah. They will, you know, during their investigations, what we want them to be doing is actually really digging deep together in communication with each other. Because some of that ache is a CH, isn't it? But they're used to CH being the ch sound or even the sh. Sound. So, it, yeah, you want to be discussing it and just, you know, experimenting. Sorry, carry on. No, not at all. I think you're absolutely right. Um, and who can help us? Well, you know, we can have lots of help from each other. Um, as teacher, we can bring in words, but we can also lean on the fairy spell mother, who is a phonics expert. She can bring words uh, to help us sift and sort through. And again, we can begin to see, actually, look, uh, a pattern emerging. Once we've got this, uh, these vowels used, uh, then our letter C is making a k sound. But it's not just the fairy spell mother. I mean, who I like to call on, as you've noticed earlier, um, because... Um, I always seem to be covered in his, in his beard. Uh, Mrs. C calling Word Wizard. Come in, Word Wizard. Are you there? Hello, I'm... Mrs. C. I'm... Hold on. Just wait. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. C. Quick. Oh, wait a minute. Hello, Mrs. C. How are you today and the children? Excellent. Oh, are you going to let me answer? Y yes. Okay. Uh, well, we're fine because we're not inebriated. So I just hope that you're, uh, if you've been hanging around with grandma, fantastic, probably. Um, now, there, what we want to know, Word Wizard, is are there more words that include the letter C and are they pronounced S as in like S or K? Can you help us? That, Mrs. C, is so interesting. One of my favourite little conundrums of the English language. Conundrums? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, for yes. instance, take a word like the word bicycle. Oh, can I write that down, Word Wizard? Because you're can, going. Can you write it down, Mrs. C, with your left hand? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Why am no, I using. <laughs> No, let's, we can all work out what bicycle, how it looks, Mrs. C. Got no clue. Yeah. So, uh, so if you look at the word, but I've actually, got write, to... write it down, please, Mrs. C. Okay, you might yeah, look, have... I'll write it down. Give Will it you please? Me. Oh, God, it's even worse than when you didn't know. Right, 
So, Mrs. C, if you look at the word bicycle, there are actually two C's in the word bicycle. One is pronounced with the S, and one is pronounced with the T. We can see that in other words as well. Words like vacancy, for instance. Oh, look. Can you see any patterns, Mrs. C? <laughs> I can't write with my left hand. I can see patterns that that includes. Yeah, that's amazing <laughs> writing. I keep forgetting to move my, your mouth. What? Thank you, Word Wizard. I, I need to say goodbye to you now because I can't. Thank you. <laughs> thank God. Yeah, thank you, Mrs. C. Yes, thank you, Word Wizard. But that's interesting. Children will find words like bicycle and vacancy. Uh, and again, these follow the pattern. We begin to see that the letters that follow the letter C have an impact on how it's pronounced. It's so exciting. Can we have a, a, a house point for Jude? We just want to be circus, please. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, thank you, Jude. Yes, we can. Let me show off. Oh, I love a show off. I need, I actually, I need a show off here to, uh -oh. to manage me word wizard. What? Can I, uh, yes, well, I'm not too happy about this. <laughs> what? We were talking about Mr. Um, about, sorry, about my beard earlier on, but <laughs> unfortunately, Kirsty Stark's uh, word wizard keeps exposing himself in class. Uh oh. So he dear. keeps he's more revealing of his trouser beard. <laughs> oh dear. Um, moving on, moving swiftly on. So ultimately, uh. The core thing with these words is we want to know, well, are there more words where we pronounce the letter C, S or K? Well, actually, there are many more words where we pronounce it with the K sound. So this hypothesis is false. And what the kids will have is a bank of words, a clear pathway through it and uh, lots of understanding uh, about new words, how they're spelled, uh, and they'll be full of excitement to share their conclusions. Basically, the spelling book, um, I need your help. I need your help to lift it off the page. And what is going to make it as productive as possible is that we as teacher are thinking through that knowledge part right at the beginning of the investigation, then giving them some kind of key pathway into it, laying it out, it doesn't matter how it's laid out, but we're thinking that layout format will help group their ideas and give them a clear sense of working through it. Uh, we interject with flashcards of words and the puppets can come and help us. Um, and then ultimately, we give them a chance to work together to sift and sort and then bring it back with a strong conclusion. Can we, can we have a couple of special mentions, please? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, one for Alex, man of the hammer, who's come up with circumference. Oh, We've got two, thanks, and Alex. Rosanna is uh, not going to be beaten. Oh. Uh, Rosanna's just come up with circumstance. Oh. Thank you. So I thought you were going to say something. Let's just come up with circumstance as well. I don't know who's the winner in this one. No, no. I thought you were going to say another word there. Um, now, just uh, before we... Do you mean circumcise? Yeah, that's also a really... Circumcise. Circumcise. It's actually got two and two circumcises. I'm the winner. Well, you are. I'm the word with <laughs> Always, always the winner. Well, circumcision would be the actual winner. Well, thank you, Mr. C. Oh, Alex is trying to be funny that I've got circumcised as well. I know, that's circumstance, sorry. Right, okay. We'll sort... Somebody can have a prize, surely. Surely we can give a prize out. Um, now, the other part of the following week, where we've got our five, uh, ten-minute quick hit... Uh, interventions where they're meeting uh, material they've met before. It's very short burst. Uh, it's uh, we've got revision from previous years coming in. Uh, it's supposed to be a quick fire, quite fun. Um, but again, the sort of things we're thinking about here uh, under the lens of the 
spelling rainbow, this gorgeous little lens, uh, the illustrative lens, where we want children to be really good at words for life um, and thinking about things that you know, places they go that are obvious, uh, meet regularly, like the kitchen. We want them to see how many words they can uh, add into this picture and spell them correctly. Uh, they can work in pairs, they can talk about it, they can help each other, there is timers, um, and they can add more. And they can develop ones for their friends as well. So that, uh, you know, so you want to be good at knowing how to spell words for the train station, words, um, words around school, words on the playground, that sort of thing. And then ultimately your... linking to topics as well. So Sorry. It's, it's a particularly good... You're about to start, a, you know, a topic on... Rainforest. On, on rainforest. So you could, you could, you've got lots of the commonly used words that you're going to be... Um, immersing them in and you've got the spellings up you can put a little display up or whatever um, or Egyptians is a good one because you've got things like sarcophagus and sphinx sphinx <laughs> sphinx shove up your sphinx oh lovely um, so other things uh, in the kind of 10 minute quick hit part um, we've got the lens of interrogate and check where we have children work with um, a, a very poorly spelled diary um, and their job is to edit like a teacher and the beauty of this is they've got all the errors uh, well they haven't got they haven't they've got to find the errors but they've got how many there are so they know their task here to find 17 uh, they've got to find them they're all phonically plausible but they're not right and they've got to zoom in and sort out, well, restaurant's not spelt correctly. Um, I need to sort that out. Uh, so, so Denise Davis says yes. that uh, her class really enjoy the assembly tasks. Yeah. They get quite competitive with them. Yeah. They now, I'm suspecting that Denise doesn't actually have to watch these sessions because she knows how they will work out. I think she's only here for the banter. Oh, well, it's a good job uh, the word wizard is delivering so much bumps for all of us, isn't it? Uh, what I love about this is that this thinking and editing like a teacher, as well as the quantity we want them to find, sort of loops back into our work with the right stuff, where we um, might task children in an editing session, look, I want you to see if you can find eight of your spelling mistakes. Um, there might be more than eight, um, but we're tasking them to find that many uh, and we make a judgment according to their self-esteem, we feel they can cope with, but this is kind of this bigger message of um, kind of being tasked to look for a certain number. Uh, there's no marking of the text, but it means that actually um, we can say, yeah, I'm going to work through this till I have found that eight. They might find more brilliant they might make it worse of course there might be some independent writing but i think this is a, a lovely message that tethers beautifully with work we're doing with right stuff and editing okay um now i want you over and beyond all the people who've got their spelling book uh we've uh done some tweaks to my focus five and i want to i want you to download the most recent one uh mr c you're going to put a link right. good boy uh www.janeconstantine.com in our place where we just put things where we don't know where to put them called frequently asked questions um, and you should find a question there. Can I download? Oh, yeah. Okay. What, what does it say, actually? Can I download my Focus 5 grid? Can Next question. Yeah, it's such... Nobody's ever so, asked that question. Well, no. <laughs> nobody's... Well, people just say, no, you can't. Shut up. We don't know. We've got stuff we never know where to file. If you don't know where to find it, it's infrequently. So, no, it's a top question on there. Oh. The answer is yes. Though, yeah, the answer is yes. You can download yours. Uh, we've listened to people and feedback and they just want a bit more space and it's straight up look straight on it's straight, straight on just there thank you so yes is the answer he's smiling first time he smiled that 
honestly, if I knew it was a My Focus 5 grid that could put a smile on his face, I'd have, I'd have, I'd have gotten to ask that question earlier today. Um, so we've got that to download. And this, what I want you to see is the children are going to be in charge of this. And we obviously have to have a bit of an auditing eye, but we've got spell checkers, we've got dictionaries, we've got their friends. What And of course, we're going to support the SEN children, but what are the five words that they're working on? And the purpose of this is they know their five, their five are different from their friends' five. It's truly differentiated. I've got I've got uh, an eye on all of them across the class because I can just uh, walk around the room and see who's working on what. Um, and the purpose of this is they are going to show for us that they can use it, spelt correctly, across three different pieces of work. And the only reason why we say three different pieces of work because we don't want them to, let's say, overuse beautiful in one piece of work. Yeah, so it's got to be applied, maybe in RE, geography and uh, English. But they show us that they've used it three times and then they can change their word. It is ever evolving, it is always mu uh, moving and it's infused in everything we do. Before you move on. Yes. I've got, I've got to talk about the chat at the moment. Oh, well, if this is about naughty, lewd word wizards and circumstances. It's not. There's a lot of, no, circums... it's not. There's a lot of flirting going on. Oh, it's not so a dating agency. We just had a new... So Jude has started talking about classical Latin and etymology. Oh. Mm. Now, Alex. Now, Alex, I don't know Alex's pronouns. I don't know Alex's gender. But Alex has said that we need an etymology expert. Oh. Okay. Oh. That... Trying to run on Jude, obviously. Yeah. But then Jude has said that she can be the etymology elephant. Oh, I love that. Who never forgets a thing. I love the etymology elephant. You did say elephant, didn't you, Mr. C? It was elephant. Yeah. But, but never like Alex, I couldn't think of an E, but... But I love that. I love that. Elephant. Because so it's like, you never forget all that I'll heritage. I'll find an elephant puppet, find them quick, because they always seem to sell out when you have the... Um, well, the yeah. And actually, uh, they can... Their trunk can explode words. Um, or yeah, I was thinking... Slightly. Yeah, that is like... I'm going to <laughs> but what was, you know, or some sort of Greek or Roman, I'm thinking about like, a, you almost like need a Hercules puppet, don't you? Like, you know, to get us to the the, the core word structure, um, you know, and, and like heritage of all these words. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Love, love, love the etymology elephant. Um, right, I'm not talking about... She's going to nick that, just so everybody knows. <laughs> It's going to be fully styled. <laughs> Nicked. Um, Completely robbed. Uh, right. My Focus 5. This is um, an example of what it might look like in Key Stage 2, where they've got the words spelt correctly. But in the next column, the tricky bit, they've begun to identify the bit that caught them out or normally catches them out. Um, so laughter, they sometimes put an F in there instead of the the um, the G and the H. Um, stared, they get confused with stares and they put an I in there. Um, achieve, they forget to uh, drop the letter I in there. Curiosity, they do a city because city is a S city normally but it's not in curiosity uh so these um little markings are just a reminder of like don't get yourself tripped up on the tricky bits but the beauty of this you want children to manage it you want this gold gel pen of application where they can go yeah look i've got I've got laughter spelt correctly in my work uh, and they gold gel they Kids love a gold gel pen, don't they? They gold gel pen all over the shop, showing us how it's kind of lifted and applied beautifully uh, in different places. Uh, and once they've got it, once they've got it in three times, you know, we can sign it off or give them the nod. You know what I mean? You might, you might not be asked to sign anything off. They can have the teacher. Oh, not. Don't sign it. Don't waste time. I'm not. All right. Don't sign just, it off. Then just give them yeah, the nod. Move on. The nod, move on. Move on. 
Flick Move. and tick. That's the same as signing off. Yeah, I know. But, it, but you yeah, flicking and ticking. I'm, I'm not. I'm just... Don't get grumpy again. We've only just cheered you up with the bloody etymology elephant. He's going down. Oh, it's oh, right. I'm trying to send you a photo, but it'll be some etymology elephant. Just don't be sending any photos to me. I've got airplane on because that's what happens. People send me photos. Oh, Alex is also a number of comic beer. Do you know what? I really, really love non-alcoholic uh, gin and tonic cans. With a bottle of gin. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. I really, gin, isn't it? I really do. Um, the what? The no, non alcoholic yeah, gin? Non -alcoholic. Yeah, you can I'm, buy non alcoholic yeah, gin and tonic. You don't buy I know, but I also like those as well. I like the taste of it. I've got it's... a real question there. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Do it. Maggie, you're bloody boring. <laughs> right. Oh, leave her so, alone. Seriously, now, Maggie has got a question. Okay. So, a practical question. Do it. Um, do the children just decide when they've used all five words three times and ask Adam to check it, or do we check them every couple of weeks? I I think it's you do you, babe, on that one, Maggie. But I would be of the mind of, um, you know, I'd set some rules up, depending on their age. I'm always looking at your work. I can see where you've got gold gel pen. If you know you've got it in, uh, you can change your laughter now and put your next word in. Um, you know, coordination. I don't know why I thought that word. You know, that's quite hard to smell. Uh, you know, uh, let's get it down and, and you can keep it moving. You can keep it fluid. Children like to know that we're watching, that we're noticing. Um, and the key thing here uh, to keep it alive is that when we're doing, I'm going to talk next week, actually, actually not next week, the week after, uh, when we're doing our demonstration writing, I've got my focus five. I've got my clangers that I'm always making mistakes with, and one of them is foul, as it happens. Uh, but yeah, so these. You spell foul correctly. You just use it. All right, words. mate. Let it go. But association. Quite a lot. <laughs> association. Always spelling that word wrong. So yeah, association would be one of my words, and uh, you know, holding me to account. But I've got them there. I've got them in my in my eye line so that I'm thinking about how I'm spelling them correctly when I use them oh, I in that. my writing. Can you put your okay, yeah, camera, I've got on. The camera yes. on? So the, the, the point of the My Focus 5 is that they, lot, with lots of other things, they gain ownership of it, that they take control. So it's really about sort of like pl placing the emphasis back on them. You don't want to be, you know, we've had a lot of sort of questions over the year, I mean, since the people have started using them since September is, you know, or do I need to plan this out for each of them? No, they're, they're identifying it. Or you might well pick it up while you're flicking and ticking around the room during their writing, for instance. You might say, oh, that's a word that I've noticed you, you know, you can make up any old cards well up, can't you? But we want them to be focusing on the word that they're spelling, or they've recognised that they're spelling incorrectly. We want them to be um, practising that out, using it, building their vocabulary and building the correct spelling on it. But it's not there to be... Uh, an extra layer of work for you. That's the most important thing. Well-being, Jane. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the children manage it. And of course, um, you know, we, we might have to keep an eye on it, uh, but it's about them getting excited and, and getting better at their spellings and seeing it applied in their real work. So big messages. Um I think it is when we're doing independent editing sessions, um, that is a really good time to get My Focus 5 established because they're editing their work, they're doing it independently, and you say, now is your time to choose your top five spellings that you don't want to make a mistake with again. And, we, you know, and they choose them, and they write them down, they check them, uh, and they're spelt correctly, uh, and we keep an eye on that. They manage their own words. It's infused across all subjects. You want it to be kind of kept moving and evolving and changing. Uh, and we model it in our demonstration writing. That's the final messages. Uh, my yeah. Focus 5 uh, really does have a big impact. And it's that kind of tr the truest sort of sense of uh, differentiation as well. Uh, so... Taking that down from across 
kind of the people have been here for two weeks. That's a long time, isn't it? Uh, the big messages from last week and this week, we have a Spell It Out board where children are beginning to see the links, joins and connections with other words that are spelt the same and sound the same. They always have kind of a regular low states test where they test out that they can spell those uh, focus words that we're working on as a class collaborative. We have uh, an investigation happening, a long one, every two weeks, but we're thinking about knowledge dumps now. They'll have to be called that for life, won't they? Knowledge dumps and layouts so that they're navigating through it and we're always fading in and out with words uh, to support them and that what's kept live, uh, alive all the time is this moving, uh, ever-changing my focus five that is stuck on the desk. I hope that helps. Uh, I know some people are here because they haven't even bought a book, haven't even rolled it out. They're still, well, they've got to get through SATs and just, it's not been their time, but they're going to get going in September. So I'm glad to pick you up now, as it were, uh, so that you can begin thinking about that. And I know we're a, we're a really uh, loving, caring community who particularly likes English subject leaders and etymology elephants. So, yeah, everybody. Uh, oh, yeah. About that oh, right. right. Go on, warn. We'll put the post in the chat. Yeah. And it's just, it's already saying there's only one left. So I better choose it before search for them. Oh yeah. Well yeah, we, we, we can Etymology we... Elephant. It's a great idea. I'm so happy <laughs> that I can look that. <laughs> oh dear God. Is right. Uh, right. Uh, no, yeah. just something else I just want to tell everybody. Um Ian, yeah. uh, I've got a little love heart there. I obviously wrote that when you when I when I like you, because yeah. it wasn't today. Um oh, hold on. I'll find out. Yeah, we also Where have is, is that on the um... Frequently Asked Questions. Why are you asking me that? <laughs> yeah, uh, that is a spelling book implementation action plan, the sort of things we might have to uh, get in place to support everybody across the school. Uh, so that, you know, that can be adapted uh, and you can edit it. It's kind of a live document and you can make it your own. That's really useful. Is that, is that so... Yeah, so that's Think of a question. Plans. No, have no. you got... <laughs> I'm saying there are action plans. I'm going to put the whole link in for all the action plans because action plans for, for reading, writing... And you spelling, do you, yeah. babe. If you want to just... So if you want to put they're great, all they're the... They're editable. You can, you can slip them into your policies. Policies. And obviously... Slip, slip them into your policies. Thank you. Never quote. Okay, okay. Never, so never quote in my context. And then all... This, this is great. Uh, and I haven't really shown off about this enough. Um, these are... Oh, stop moaning. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, these are brilliant. So we've got these from year two to year six. Uh, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. They are a bumper SAT style spelling test. And we advise that you... Uh, get kids to have a go at doing these. Uh, we've got some admi administration guidance on how to sort them out, but it's uh, in you know in keeping with kind of the SAT style stuff. All leads to the national curriculum. Have I said that? Probably said that so many yeah. times. You're getting bored. Uh, they're, they're, sorry, I'm going right, to. So no. So no, they're good to do. Have you got the, the camera on? Have you yeah, yeah, yeah. No, oh. are they good to do um, the beginning of the year or beginning of the term? That will give you a progress check, so you, you can't say they're, they're just laid out like the Sats uh, spellings, but it's a good so that you can check the progress. I know you did, Jane, but you don't have to go around the houses. Thank you. Thank you for repeating all of my can I, words. Can I ask some questions as well? Yeah, ask me questions now. Then that's a good idea. So, Jay Branson. Yes. Branson, sorry. Jake. Jay. Jay. Jay sorry. I don't know that. It's just the letter. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Do so you need to do the first investigation two two weeks before you then do your first? Right, the, Jay, I should have read the question before I said it. You, you need to go back and watch session one last week's because that will explain it all, Jay Brands. The only thing where you need a, a longer lead is you have to have your spell it out board infused in the room for it's two weeks. Before James. you do, you go graphic grafters, but investigations, you can just pick them up and go. 
pick and go. Well, Maggie's got Liverpool in question. Stop being picking on Maggie. Well, she actually said that she, oh. she's apologising for the boring questions. I'm only joking. Uh, is there a term with progress check? I would go and use those. Um, no, there isn't. But um, I, I would just use those so that you can measure. Yeah, there isn't a termly progress check um, and uh, our guidance for those um, pupil progress checks is to do them at the beginning and at the end of the year so you can really, but yeah, uh, you could, you could, because there's 50, uh, we, you could break them down even further, but we didn't want, what we want to do is put all of our learning across the whole spelling book and map it across the year so that we know that we've got it all covered. Uh, it's kind of a bit more of a mammoth task. The best time to do those September and then do them again in July. I know what you mean though. Um, you know, I think the thing is, the problem with that is we've got some schools who are uh, doing investigations in a slightly different order. So, um, you know, because it covers the national curriculum, there's no requirement to do investigation one then and, and uh, 36 later. You can shuffle them about. So we kind of made a decision to do it at the beginning and at the end of the academic year. But yeah. Um, any other questions? No, I'm thinking. We're all getting a bit tough. I think I don't want any more. But ask me if you have. Hit me up. Um, oh, if you have a school and you're here and you're eager and you've got great questions and you've got an etymology elephant and your words wizard is popping off, but you need everybody involved. Uh, We've got online spelling training uh, that you can tap into and get your uh, mitts on, especially for that kind of September readiness. Uh, and that's on the janeconstein.com site. Um, and also just uh, in frequently asked questions linked to the science of learning and spelling. We've got why the spelling book was designed in that way. Uh, what, what do we know about how children learn spelling uh, and locked in there is everything that we're trying to promote through the spelling book, which is this pattern finding uh, brain thinking when it comes to working with the structure of words. Uh, as Diane McGuinness said way back in 1997, it's about children really understanding the reoccurring regularities. Uh, if you know, I don't know if you know this book, Why Children Can't Read, uh, that is um, that is absolutely one of uh, the Bibles uh, and the trailblazers with uh, our work with um, synthetic phonics now. So, hey, oh, um, what? So, well, I've got some questions. Yes. First of all, Helen Sampson. Yes, Helen. I'm very much looking forward to, uh, I, I, you must be going to Helen's Oh, school am I, in Helen? In August. Oh, that's gorgeous. August? I thought it was in Mexico. I mean, I've got no, to keep my... Mexico in July. I'll tell you what, whoever right took now, screenshots of me last week with the orange background my face was orange i look like an umpa you go out there for work to be fair. <laughs> i don't know if i want to go i don't know if i want to go to um um yeah so oh yes august right. yeah so Emma, is, oh, is, is she in leicester then that it's happening in august uh, I don't know. We don't know. It could be. There's a few. Oh. There's a few local authorities that go back early. Yeah. So I think Exeter is one of them. Yeah. They go back in so like early, you know, like late August, Leicestershire. Great. And a few others. Well, that'd be gorgeous, Helen. Scotland, of course. That'd be Scotland, lovely. Scotland. I am. Right. I am going to Scotland soon. So yeah. Can I, can August I, I, stuff. No, I'm sure that we're going to find it in a minute. So Helen Sampson says yes. So I'm presuming the yes is to Leicestershire. Oh, well, I'll see you then, Helen. I right, cannot I've got, wait. I've got a, um, a question from Emma. Yes, Emma. yes. Uh, she says, in Go Graphy and Graphy Words, do you still recommend doing a pre-spell chart? Uh, you didn't mention it last week. I don't know what that question means. Do you, Mister C? Well, so basically, it, it oh, about, yeah. So it's about doing a, a sort of like a collection, a, a bit of a sort of like a brainstorm in your chopping session before you get going on the grow graphing grafters. Um. Oh. As a little. Spoon. If I, I think it's basically what you think will work. You know that those words are there for all the time. When you talk about a pre-spell chart. 
Um, I probably need to understand that. It's probably something I've said. Uh, Which I, you know is mostly <laughs> BS. Oh, how dare you, Mr. C. But I think it's that, that key thing that children see that when we're gathering their ideas, that we um, are able to kind of zoom them into the very phonemes that uh, are making that sound. Um, so I... Not entirely sure of your question, so I'm not going to okay. pretend that I, I know what, what it means. But I think that's probably an email. That's probably an email that we need to kind of chat around. That. Email, what? Where they can email, email me, yeah. Because lots of people email Ian at the training space. Well, email and Ian. And they shouldn't be emailing at the training space. Who are they because emailing? Because the space doesn't read Ian to emails. Naughty boy. But info at the training space yeah. is the best one because that's Ellie and Megan and they're brilliant. Yeah, and they'll um, make sure I get absolutely everything. So I think that is something where we need to clarify. So I'm not going to, because um, I'm not a bit uncertain what, what we're getting at there. Rosanna. Oh, God, Mr. C, no more no, bloody no, no. questions, because I'm it's, getting it's, in a faff. Oh, oh, God. Rosanna has asked, <laughs> yeah. can the word wizard come again next week? No. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure he'll grab my fantastic working on. They do get on brilliantly. No, that he's not allowed. Uh, he it Luckily, no. Grandma Fantastic had an instructor about 25 years ago. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're on camera. I'm not on camera. Well, I know you, you're so naughty. You he's know the not. rules. If you're on camera, put your bloody camera on if you're chatting. Right, okay. So next week. Next week. Um, I'm so sorry about that pre-spell question. I am going to get to the bottom of that. Do you know what? That'll, I'll jump awake at 2 o'clock no, in the morning no. and I'll remember what you've asked me. Right, rewind. Next week, we're leaving the word wizard behind and we are moving on to writing. Um, we're going to have two sessions on writing. I'm really excited about it. And it's going to be about kind of lesson study. We're going to zoom into one learning chunk and the devil's in the detail it's going to be really ant-like and zoomed in and things that are going to really sharpen what we're doing and the following week uh we're going to have a look at some kind of teacherly tricks up our sleeve uh, to ensure that our modeled writing is absolutely transparent for children so they can begin to see two things at once you know uh, the thought process and the writing uh, being born to life before their very eyes so there's a lot to explore over the next two sessions uh, a reminder of the funky code sunday sessions 35 uh, if you want 35% off uh, the Training Space website, so that's your spelling rainbows, that's your spelling books, um, everything. everything. But it's only on the Training Space website. Yeah, so let's write that website down. It's only on the Training Space website uh, where you can use that 35% code. Uh, I feel like now I'm writing with my left hand and nothing's fitting in, but yeah. So, yeah, got code up in the code. Same time next week, 7.30. Any last words, Mr. C? Um, uh, uh, no, just people. Have you got uh, your camera yeah. on? Yeah, yes. Yeah, Great. I've got I'll my camera on. Thank you. you got my camera on? Yeah. I'll just peep my nose. That's why it's, he's, a naughty, he's so naughty. You oh, couldn't wait, you what, couldn't wait you a few seconds for an itchy nurse nostril. Oh, dear. Um, no, just... Um, you got I've got one on question. Now? Yeah, I've got the camera on. Good. Um, Emma has said, you said last year... She wants you to remember what you said last year. I just year. found the bloody pre-spell. I don't know, no. <laughs> the words with the ticks and tricky bits before you did, do the test part. I think she's clarifying... Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you mean. So, basically, we... Last week, I don't know if you remember, I talked about things that were tight and things that were loose. And the loose was almost like the extra. You're talking about Grandma Fantastic. Calm down with the red one. I was talking about like extra zhuzh, extra, like if you want to explore it, like yes, if you want to talk about tricky bits, if you want to talk. But what was happening is the community was like going, it's only 20 minutes, we're overloaded. So we made a decision like what is the most crucial things there? The most crucial things there is that children know the words, can find the phonemes and also know deep down if I can spell this word, I can also uh, spell that phoneme correctly in this word, this word, and this word. 
tricky bits and other bits, that is extra fuff if you want it, but you don't have to have it. Does that, uh, does that clarify? Your phone's back in your on come on, Oscar. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, this is this is Oscar. He's revising. Get down in the camera, people. Come here, you. Yeah, he's done so much revision for his GCSEs. Ah! Oh dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing a few balls around in the garden. That's not going to get you to understand your RE. Anyway, uh, thank you, everybody. You've been an absolute delight. Um, I'm going to send you lots of heartburst. Uh, it is the end of us and Word Wizard, but back in the room, 7.30, Sunday, back with writing. Thank you, everybody. You've been a delight.